formerly of Minsk. Thank you all very, very, very much. In a second, we're now going to the eastern part of Washington, to Spokane. Steve Larn, Steve Largent. I'll get my teeth out of my tongue and see what I'm saying. Our Voyager 1990 games, we are just past the halfway mark. I'm Larry King here with Nick Charles. Hannah Storm is at gymnastics, and we'll see her shortly. As we enter our second weekend, several sports have ended their competition, and we got some new ones just starting. Women's gymnastics last night, boxing today, ice hockey today, wrestling now with us. Tonight, we continue our coverage of women's gymnastics. We're going to try to top last night, and that ain't going to be easy. The Soviet Union won the gold in the women's team competition. The United States finished a very strong second. Tonight, we're back to the Tacoma Dome, about 35 miles south of here, for the individual all-around. When we left you last night, the Soviet champion, Svetlana Boganskaya, had not qualified for tonight's all-around competition. Fell off the uneven bars in one mistake in that sport, and you're dead. But Svetlana is back. Now, Hannah Storm is there, and she's going to try to explain all this for us. Hannah, what happened? Well, Larry, there is a new development, as we've touched upon, with Svetlana Boganskaya Sky replacing Tatiana Lysenko, who was the qualifier. There is some speculation that this is actually a piece of Soviet strategy for tonight's individual all-around competition. We have talked with a couple of members of the Soviet delegation. Here's what we came up with. Coach Leonid Arkayeva said that Lysenko suffered trauma in her right thigh last night after her vault routine, although she certainly did not appear to be injured. Uh, the team doctor, Sergei Marinikov, confirmed the decision to replace Lysenko. And this happened once before, back in the 1985 World Championships. The Soviets had did this as well. They replaced two out of three qualifiers, and the two replacements tied for the gold. Now, let's take you back to last night, uh, to what Larry referred to, and very uncharacteristically, the world champion, Svetlana Boganskaya, trying a reverse heck during her uneven bar routine. She fell off the apparatus. This is what we did not see. Boganskaya in tears afterwards had only a 9275 score on that apparatus, which effectively took her out of tonight's competition. Meanwhile, very strong was the USA's Kim Zemeskel. She was the highest all-around scorer last night. She hit on every apparatus, an excellent high bar routine, a lot of difficulty, and right here she sticks her landing. She scored a 9-9 on that apparatus. These two ladies will meet again tonight. They have met only once. That was earlier this year at the Paris International. Zemeskel lost to Boganskaya by the smallest of margins. 25 one thousandths of a point. So, Larry, if you want to look at this as an opportunity, it is for Kim Zemeskel to upseat the world champion. Thanks, Hannah. We'll be going back to Hannah, of course, all throughout gymnastics tonight. Nick Charles is here in the studio with us, my co-host, one of the great sportscasters in this country. Certainly, here's how the numbers look in our ninth day of competition. Added note, it has nothing to do with medals, but a very exciting moment a few minutes ago out of Cheney Stadium in baseball. Larry, Japan. 90, Goodwill Games. There's Moscow. We'll go there in a couple of minutes. Don't go away. After. It is a gorgeous early evening here in Seattle. We can't emphasize that enough. I mean, the weather is fantastic. Welcome back to our coverage of the 1990 Goodwill Games. Joining me is Vladimir Posner, the known, he's known worldwide for his expertise in Soviet and American culture. He's with us for all these games. Also, there you see it's quarter after uh, four in the morning in Moscow, the sun just rising. And there is the Central Army Sports Club. And Vladimir Zaglada, who is the coach and president of the Dynamo Gymnastics Club, is present with us and some of his gymnasts working out in the back. And Mr. Posner will help us here. Would you ask Vladimir to, Vladimir, ask Vladimir, what makes uh, Svetlana Boganskaya so special? Вот такой вопрос. Почему Богинская такая особая гимнастка? В чем ее особый талант, что ли? Ну, мне кажется, что Богинская, поскольку ее тренер Люба Мироманова часто возила ее еще с самых маленьких лет, она впитала все самое лучшее, что было в советской гимнастике. What do the Soviets do that make them so special? What does he think no, they do? What is the secret of the success of the Soviet gymnastics? There is a secret, a special secret that we have. You know, Vladimir and all of our viewers, there is no special secret. The secret of the Soviet gymnastics is in the fact that there is a secret in all of world gymnastics. It is a great effort and talent of the sportsmen who are working on the benefit of the most talented people and people who are dedicated to the sport. That is the only secret. How early did he recognize that she was the one who would be 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 the one who
young ladies to get started. Как вы считаете, в каком возрасте следует начинать вот гимнасткам и не слишком ли рано начинают? На мой взгляд, не слишком рано начинают, если дети примерно до семи лет начинают играть в гимнастику, то после семи лет они могут заниматься этим прекрасным видом спорта. Right now, the women are beginning the all-around gymnastics competition to the Tacoma Dome. And Jim Simpson, James. Larry, I would like to give you the best report in the world, but the bloom is out of the sage. The air has been let out of the balloon. We were looking forward to Boganskaya, whom they reinstated Kathy Johnson, to beat Kim Zemeskel. And the story is already over. Kim Zemeskel, her story in her first event of the evening. She started at the uneven bars and unfortunately missed one of her release moves is called a Jaeger front. Very, very disappointing for Kim. This is her weakest event, and she said so herself yesterday. It's why she was so pleased with a 9-9-1-2 on this event yesterday. Comes right here. She does a front giant. I knew right as she released the bar, she was way too far away from the bar. Wasn't even close. And that in the scoring for the all-around means that Kim Zemeskel is no challenge at all for any medal here this evening. Well, not this evening. It would be very difficult to make up a five-tenth of a point um, ground that she would have to make up. Very, very difficult to do that. I'm not going to say impossible because, as I said yesterday, gym gymnastics, you can expect the expected and the unexpected. Well, the expected almost didn't happen because last night we were saying Bogan Sky was out of it. They have put her in it tonight to face the mescal. She's later up on the same event, the uneven bars. And Kim was going to go head on with her, but has fallen in her first half up. I very much believe that it was a strategic move on the Soviet part to put, put Boganskaya back into the competition, because they honestly felt Kim or Betty Okino could really challenge for the gold medal. And unfortunately, it's just not going to happen for Kim. So disappointing. They worked so incredibly hard for it to all end in a, just a brief second. The top 16 from last night's team competition qualify. No more than two from any one team. And Betty Okino is the other. They take the aggregate scores of all your apparatus appearances, lump them together, and that person with the highest score at the end of the evening is your all-around champion. Svetlana Boganskaya, who fell on that same apparatus last night, put back in, and she will begin again tonight where she fell last night. Exactly. It's very ironic that Kim fell on the very same event that almost ruined Boganskaya's chances for trying to take this all around. But you can't forget Boganskaya's teammate Kalinina, who is off to a wonderful start in the competition, and of course, Betty Okino of the United States. Betty so Okino, a good, surprisingly strong, and as you will see the stain, standings from last night, you will see how strong she was. First of all, Kim Zemesko. Wonderful scores, all nine nines, totaling 39.661, tremendous all around score. She would have been the all-around champion. And here's what Boganskaya did after what happened in the uneven ball. And I think that's one of the reasons why they used Boganskaya, because on the three events that she did hit, she was well above her teammates in the rest of the competition. And uh, last night, Betty Okino, by the way, finished fourth. This is Henrietta Onadi of Hungary. And this is her first event in the four rotations. And she is here as an individual. They do not have a team here. She finished actually fifth in the all-around competition yesterday to qualify. And she is superb on this event. She's a former European champion on the uneven bars, and it shows. It's called a Ginger. A little rough on the transition there. Her second release move, the Jaeger front. I first saw Henrietta compete in the American Cup two years ago. She has grown quite a bit since then. I know it's hard to tell because she's still very tiny. Excellent work on the uneven bars. Onadi of Hungary and Ufanos Boganskaya of the Soviet Union, the world champion. And again, a tremendous crowd at the Tacoma Dome. This has been a setup for months. And tomorrow night, the apparatus finals, and Kim Zemeska will be back to try on that one for individual honors. The all-around should boil down to, I was going to say earlier, the two Soviets and the two Americans. Kim will have a tough time battling back into medal contention. But it will definitely be the Soviet Betty Okino of the United States. And watch out for Henrietta Onodi right here in Zhang Wanin of China. Nice work on her Giants. 
A nice high tuck double back dismount. Not the most difficult dismount being done, but she does it quite well. The highest score thus far on this event is Ava Rueda of Spain, a 9837. And we wait now for Onadi of Hungary and her mark, and she gets a 9862. So she ties the highest. And Boganskaya now, this was her in, this is her right now. She's getting ready at the uneven. Now let's go over to the vault and something that has already happened, Natalia Kalinina and her second vault. And as I said, she was off to a great start. Scored a 9.987. Performing a Yurchenko with a full twist and look at that landing. That is as close to perfect as you will probably see. You can always say it can be higher or it can be farther from the horse. Gabby's already told the score in that ball. 9.987, just about as perfect as you can get. And she and Boganskaya after the odds on favorite. That was earlier, and Boganskaya now is getting ready on the uneven bars. But let's with the fault this good, you gotta look at it one more time. Watch the form, the perfect form. Straight body, and you can't say anything else about that landing. And now, as you take a look at Svetlana Boganskaya, the world champion in the European Championship, she won all four gold medals. Last night, she fell on this apparatus, the uneven bars, and tonight, her biggest competition from the USA, and perhaps her biggest competition outside the Soviet Union, Kem Zemesko, has just fallen. And I have been in this position before, having to go up the following day after falling from an apparatus. And it's not the best feeling in the world. Here it comes right here, the reverse hex. And she's got it today. I didn't think she'd make the same mistake. She rarely makes any at all. Nice straight body line. She does not have the most difficult routine in this competition. In fact, by far, but it is so clean. That's nice tight, double back dismount. It's a sign of a true champion. They show the consistency, the perfect form. 24 hours ago, Svetlana was in tears after missing on the same apparatus. 24 hours later, Zemeskul has missed, and Svetlana has turned in a fine performance. We await now the judges. Take a look here. This is where she could sigh with some relief, get past that move. It's so important to be able to rebuild your confidence, and she did it right there. And as I said, she doesn't do the most difficult routine. She did one release move, but that's a very beautiful move here. The split handstand into the toe on handstand, right into her pike double back dismount. And recall that we showed you earlier Natalia Kalinina's vault for a 9.987. And here's a 9.950. Well, the Soviets are on their way again. Four apparatus in all, they've completed one, but they've got the top two scores here at the Tacoma Dome. Preparing for the uneven bars, Kathy Johnson tells us what it takes for all of these young women as a ready for competition in the Goodwill Games. Athletes prepare for competition in many different ways. The mental preparation that is required for an optimal performance is most often referred to as visualization. Gymnasts visualize in many different ways. Very much an inward process, sometimes seen by a perceptive audience. Some gymnasts actually see themselves performing a perfect routine. Others feel themselves going through every move. For those of you who wonder what goes through the mind of an athlete preparing to compete, it's called visualization. And in whatever form, you'll see a lot of it tonight. With that in mind, here is Betty Okino on the uneven bars the other member of the American team. She had such a great competition yesterday in the team. Giant with a half turn to a front giant. Here's her release move. Nice high Jaeger front. Beautiful amplitude. 
such long lines. Second release move. Oops. That will be a deduction. At least two, possibly three tenths of a point. And the dismount. <laughs> Pull the Brandy, a front giant, into a front somersault with a half twist. It is not a very difficult dismount.